I think early next year, the government, the U.S. government approves a couple big spot Bitcoin ETFs. I think they approve Fidelity. I think they approve BlackRock, maybe Grayscale. I don't know. A handful. Let's just assume that that ship has left the station. Sooner or later, they approve them. What do you think happens for Gemini, what happens for you guys, but what happens in the market space? I mean, does, do we double like volume? Do we, you know, do we double price in six months? You know, what's your take? And, and obviously you guys are thinking about that because you're going to get a massive inflow of activity. Sure. So, you know, Gemini has been uh, a custodian in publicly traded ETFs, crypto ETFs for many years now. So we have lots of uh, Canadian ETFs. So Canada already has approved, listed spot ETFs that trade every single day. And we're a large custodian of those assets. So we've been doing this for um, f a few years now. So we're ready for the US to uh, uh, approve this. Like, I think, you know, you hear this often, you know, it's not a, um, it's, it's not an if, it's a when. And I actually think it's sooner rather than later. I think these things get approved in January and launch shortly after. Um, so we're going to be a custodian in this market uh, for all these issuers. Um, so, you know, Gemini has signed up with multiple fund issuers to be the custodian. Um, you know, so outside of our own experience with this, I think there's a few different things to think about. One is I think that it, it solidifies at least Bitcoin and crypto to an extent as a suitable viable asset class for the world, right? Like entering ETS with real issuers like BlackRock, you know, these are, these are, you know, the best in the world and the best capital market system in the world. So I think it solidifies Bitcoin to start and crypto as an asset class. And it also offers the ability for access to lots of people that don't access Bitcoin directly in the underlying, mm -hmm. right? There's, RIAs, there's SMAs, there's investment advisors, there's 401ks, there's ETF funds, you know, that don't buy Bitcoin specifically from a Gemini, right? But having it, you know, within their systems in the same kind of products that they're similar to, it's going to allow, you know, access to a large swath of capital that doesn't access crypto today. Do you have, yeah, absolutely. Do you have um, products either currently or that you're developing that would make it you know, so many people I know are interested in Bitcoin, but they have no idea how to get it. And even you say, go, well, go buy it on Coinbase, you know, or, you know, right. It's like, it, it, the, I don't know why, but it just seems like there's still a step for most people. Spot ETFs make that easier, right? But I mean, are there actual products you're developing that would truly simplify the process for people to hold, buy, interact? Not not the ETF itself, but through Gemini um, in in crypto and particularly Bitcoin. Sure. So, you know, it is easy to access crypto today. You don't. You can download the Gemini app in the App Store. It is a very simple, clean UX experience to download the app, to sign up, to fund it um, with you know with your bank and buy Bitcoin. Um, so it is pretty easy. I can open up my app and buy Bitcoin in, you know, five touches, right? So that exists today. It's really easy. There's millions of users on the Gemini, you know, mobile app that, that buy and sell crypto in a very easy way. We have advanced tools as well. We have advanced trading tools, but there's a simple uh, way to do this. So it's not any different than downloading Robinhood or signing up for E-Trade. It is today pretty mature and simplified, and you don't necessarily need to understand the blockchain or see all the things that go on, you know, behind the scenes to make Gemini uh, able to do what it does. So it is pretty simple today. I think I think the ETFs don't make it easier for people to access crypto necessarily. They just open it up to different distribution. Yeah. So <clears throat> two great points you make, and I'm being a little bit of a devil's advocate there, but. I don't think most people know that. And that's fascinating to me, right? We have a block that suggests this is a tricky, difficult space. Now, I'm not even talking about self-custody here. I'm just saying just to, to purchase the asset, right? And I don't know if that's a narrative that just got driven in, but I think most people hearing you say that are like, really, it's that simple? And Perianne, uh, 
told me from D Digital Chamber of Commerce said four in 10 people actually hold crypto. So I'm like, wow, I, I didn't realize the number was that high. Like, yet most people still are like, oh, I don't know, it's difficult. <laughs> like, like, yeah, education. You're it's not actually difficult. Education is still critical, right? I mean, people hear the word blockchain or distributed ledgers and, you know, they get confused. It's the same when you try to teach someone who's never traded options before or what a future is, right? Um, and so, you know, people get somewhat turned off or, or scared of the nomenclature that's used. But generally with businesses like Gemini, we make it simple. It's very secure. It's, it's, it's quite easy to use.